Hey, what's up guys? Ryan here from Extreme Terrain, and today I'm here with the Barricade HD front bumper with 20-inch LED light bar, fitting your 2018 and up Jeep Wrangler JL. Now this is gonna be for those of you JL owners that are looking to upgrade, ditch that factory plastic front bumper, and are wanting a fully functional bumper that's gonna provide plenty of protection for the front end when you venture off pavement. Now this has a very unique design, stretching almost full width, covering the majority of the front end of the Jeep, which is gonna provide you plenty of protection. This features an angular design made of heavy duty steel and that angular design is going to add to the structural integrity of this particular bumper. The whole thing is also finished in a black powder coating which is going to provide plenty of corrosion protection. Now, this bumper is going to offer you tons of functionality and features from its built in winch plate which is going to allow you to mount up to a 12,000 pound winch, D-rings for an excellent recovery point, 20 inch LED light bar and it even allows non Rubicon LED fog lights to be installed. It's going to be great for those nighttime trail rides or if you're just driving around at night. Now, of course, you are gonna get more functionality, clearance, and protection out of an aftermarket steel bumper than you're gonna get with that factory plastic bumper. This is ultimately gonna increase the capability of your Jeep while adding an aggressive yet stylish appearance. Now, one thing you need to keep in mind when adding a steel bumper to the front end of your Jeep is going to be weight. Steel bumpers are gonna weigh a lot more than a plastic bumper, and by the time you add a winch, whether it be steel or synthetic, you're really gonna weigh that front end down, and you might need to bring it back up because you might not like the way that it looks. Now, there's a ton of options for front bumpers, both on our website and in the aftermarket, and it all comes down to the one that you like. This is a very capable and good looking bumper that's gonna set you apart from the rest. Now, as far as price goes, this bumper is coming in right around $375. Now, I think this is a pretty good price considering what you're getting. Most aftermarket options can range anywhere from a little under $300 all the way over to $1,000. The thing about Barricade is they offer some of the most affordable options on the market today, and this is gonna be one of their top of the line options. As far as installation goes, I'm gonna give this a two out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter. There is some assembly required and some wiring. This is all pretty straightforward, and you can expect this to take you about two hours, but you can get all this done just using basic hand tools. Now, with that being said, let's hop into our install. Tools are used for this install, trim panel removal tool, flathead screwdriver, quarter inch drive ratchet, 18 millimeter socket, 16 millimeter socket, seven millimeter socket, eight millimeter socket, 10 millimeter socket, 12 millimeter socket, quarter inch drive socket extension, quarter inch drive ratchet, three ace drive ratchet, and the two provided Allen keys. So the first thing, of course, is to get that front bumper off. So we're gonna start with a splash shield underneath. You need a flathead screwdriver and an eight millimeter socket. So we're gonna crawl underneath and start with that. So we're gonna have a series of push pins across the front where the splash shield connects to the bumper. You can use a flathead screwdriver just to pry up on that center section and that's gonna allow you to get that clip out. So next you're gonna have two screws. You're gonna have one on each side. We're gonna use an eight millimeter socket to get those screws out. Once you get that last screw out, you're ready to remove your splash shield. The next thing we're gonna do is take this bracket off down here. You're gonna have two bolts in it. We're gonna use a 16 millimeter socket. Take that off. Once you get the bolts out, you can slide this up. And slide it up and off. Next thing we're gonna do is take this end panel off. This is covering our fog lights. This isn't a necessary step to get this bumper removed, but we're gonna remove it so you can get a better look at the nuts that we're taking off on the frame rail. So to do this, we're gonna use a flathead screwdriver. We're gonna take these push pins out. Now, depending on your model, you may have a different bumper end, and this might have screws in it that you'll need a seven millimeter socket for. A 
The next thing we're gonna do is unplug our fog light harness at our frame rail on the passenger side. So what we're gonna do is press this little tab in here on the side of it, and that's gonna allow us to disconnect our fog lights. After we do that, we're gonna unbolt our bumper. So you're gonna have eight nuts, four on each frame rail. We're gonna use an 18 millimeter socket to get all those out. So on this side, we already have our plastic shield off, so we're just gonna go ahead and get these nuts off. So after that, we're gonna go back up top and we're gonna take these last two push pins out. You're gonna have one on top of each frame rail. Same thing, we're gonna use a flathead screwdriver to take these out, pry up on the center. That's gonna allow you to pull the whole thing out. After that, you're ready to take your bumper off. All right guys, now I know it doesn't look like much right now, but we still have some assembly to do on this bumper and we'll get to that in just a second. Now, before we get started with the assembly and of course move on to the installation, I wanna just stop down just for a second, talk about some of the differences between your factory bumper and this aftermarket bumper or an aftermarket bumper such as this and also some of the benefits that you're gonna get over your factory bumper. Now the factory bumper is made of plastic and Jeep did a great job at making it a pretty good looking bumper. Aesthetically, it's pretty pleasing. However, it is made of plastic and another downfall of it is it's a full width bumper. So that is gonna take up room in front of that wheel wells and if you are an avid off-roader or if you're just looking to hit some trails, it's not gonna give you very good approach angles by blocking those wheels. Now with the factory bumper being plastic, of course it is gonna take minor bumps and bruises and protect you from little impacts. But if you're out there on the trails or if you just want some more functionality, obviously an aftermarket steel bumper is gonna be your best option. Now this one right here, this one is about a mid-width design, so it is a little shorter than a full width. It's gonna give you a little bit more clearance on the ends, and of course it has this nice taper design, which that's really gonna increase that approach angle, and it's gonna allow you to drive that wheel up on any obstacle or a rock that you may come across. The next thing is, it is a heavy-duty steel bumper. Now this bumper is made of steel plating. It has a very aggressive angular design. That's gonna add to the whole strength of it, and most of the plating, for the most part, is gonna be about an eighth inch. Now, of course, the winch mount inside is a little thicker, about three eighths, a little larger than that. Now, its angular design is gonna add to that strength, and of course, they're gonna use a little thinner metal, and that's gonna add to that lightweight, so it's not really gonna weigh your Jeep down. As far as recovery points goes, your factory bumper does have some tow hooks, which are pretty good recovery points, but of course, when you're getting yanked out, or if you're yanking someone out, you're using a tow strap or a tow rope, that can easily slip out of there. Now, this is gonna come with D-rings and D-ring mounts, and of course, that's a very secure spot. You can hook a rope or a strap, and that way you know full and well when you're tugging someone out or being tugged out that that rope is not gonna slip out. You're not gonna have to reset that. 
Now, one of the nice things about this bumper, it comes with brackets, and that's gonna allow us to switch out the fog lights. The problem is, with the factory bumper, when you ditch that, you're losing those factory fog lights, and of course, some aftermarket options are not gonna come with an option to mount those fog lights. It's gonna give you a little less visibility when you're out there on the trails at night, or if you're just cruising down some back roads. And it's gonna come with brackets, that's gonna allow you to install those factory fog lights on the ends, and this is actually going to fit the factory non-Rubicon LED lights, just for reference. Now, besides all of the protection that it's gonna give you up front, you're going to get another great recovery point and of course a very nice feature of this bumper. It's going to allow you to add a winch and you can fit up to a 12,000 pound winch with this and it gives you a very nice slot in the middle that's going to allow you to mount your fair lead and of course this is going to sit pretty low so it's not really going to affect airflow when you're out there on the trails. Now on top of being able to switch over those factory fog lights, this is actually going to come with a 20 inch light bar. Now that 20 inch light bar is going to mount right up here, it's going to have a pretty good vantage point, allow you to shine down on a ton of stuff and of course you're getting that additional visibility and lighting with that 20 inch light bar. That's going to be really great for those nighttime trail rides or if you're just pulling someone out, winching someone out or getting pulled out. And that's going to give you some buffering and some peace of mind if you come across any bushes or anything on the trail. That's going to keep those from scratching your grill and messing up the front end of your Jeep. Now again, speaking on that aggressive design, this is going to have that angular design and that's going to make that a lot stronger. Not only is it facing forward, it's welded in, but it has these sharp angles and that's really going to add some structure to it. Now the whole thing is coated in a textured black powder coating and of course that's not only going to add to the aggressive rugged off-road styling of this bumper but it's going to protect your investment from the elements and that's going to keep that free from corrosion when you're out there if you happen to hit it against something sling some mud whatever you're doing on the trails now, like i said there is some assembly required we have some brackets to install 20 inch light bar and we do have to split open our factory bumper that way we can get the harness out and those fog lights so with that being said we're going to put all this stuff on the table we're going to start switching stuff over so i can show you how to get this installed all right guys, so we got our factory bumper on the table. Like I said, we need to take out these fog lights. We also need to get this harness out of the bumper. This is relatively easy to do. We have to split the case open and you're gonna need a couple tools. You can use a ratchet or an impact with a seven millimeter socket. You need a flathead screwdriver or a trim panel removal tool. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go ahead and flip this over, face it down on its front. We'll start taking stuff apart. The first section we're gonna remove is going to be this plastic little frame section up here. You're gonna have these little push pins all across. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna get in this little notch right there, and you're gonna lift up that center pin. Once you get that, well, you don't have to get it all the way out, but once you get it up, then you can get your screwdriver underneath, and then you can pry that whole thing out. The reason we have to go across and take this thing off is because there's some screws underneath it here that we need to get out. That way we can split our bumper case. So there's gonna be six of these total holding this panel on. We'll get that last one out. You want to put a hand on that panel, and then you can get that thing off. So the next thing we're going to do is take off these end caps. Now there's going to be two different designs to these end caps. This one obviously has those push pins, just like that upper frame section. And another different model of this is actually going to have seven millimeter screws all around here that you'll need to use. The reason we need to take these end caps off, we need to get our fog lights out, which are lying underneath this, and we have some additional screws that we need to access as well. So there's gonna be six total in these panels. These little end caps. I'll just go around, take all those out. All right, so after you get that end cap off, that thing's just gonna pull right off. You can see where our fog light is. This is gonna be held in with four screws. We're also gonna need to unplug this harness. Now to do so, what you're gonna do is just squeeze on this little brown tab, and that's gonna allow you to pull that off. So that's gonna be that little tab right there, like a seesaw. Move that out of the way. Then we're gonna use that seven millimeter socket to take all four of those screws out.
All right, so once you get all of that out, you get the fog light out, you can do that same exact process to get the other side apart. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is take all of these little tiny screws out. That way we can split our case apart and get this harness out. And we're gonna use that same seven millimeter socket. We're gonna go around and pull all these screws out. There's a ton of them, so we're just gonna follow along as I get them out one by one. Now on the very bottom of the bumper, these screws are actually gonna go up through the bottom. It looks like we have about eight of them. So now we got all the screws out, the next thing we're gonna do is pull apart the case. So basically we need to get this outer shell off of this inner shell right here. So what we wanna do is hold that outer shell and we're gonna pull up on this beam right here. And the biggest issue is gonna be getting these tow hooks out of that outer shell. I would recommend the use of a second set of hands, maybe a friend could help you out. It's gonna make it a lot easier holding this thing still and trying to wiggle this thing out. But anyway, we're gonna get that up a good amount and then what we wanna do is we wanna press down and get these tow hooks out. So since we just need this section right now, you can actually take this outer cover and just place it in a safe spot. So on the back side, this harness is gonna be held in in two spots on both sides. You're gonna have it right here through the plastic. So we just need to take our trim panel removal tool and then it's gonna be through this bumper beam right here. So same thing, just gonna pry that out of there and then that's gonna pass down through the outside. So you wanna do that same exact thing on the other side. Then we're gonna flip it over and get the rest of the harness fell. So you wanna weave that harness out of that hole and then we're just gonna go all the way across. We'll free this whole thing up. You actually take these and just push them backwards. It's actually gonna lift that little lip up and then you can get underneath of that. It makes it a lot easier. All right, last one and then this thing's free. Next thing we're gonna do is work on assembling our fog light brackets and all of the hardware that comes with it. So first thing we're gonna do before we actually get these in, these are side specific, but these are gonna install the same way as far as these little additional brackets. So what you're gonna get is this little extension bracket right here. You're gonna have this open end and it also has an offset. So we wanna face that open end up. We also wanna face it towards our fog light hole. Now, you're gonna get a ton of hardware with this kit and some of the hardware is not gonna be used. You're gonna get these longer M6 bolts along with these flange nuts. These are actually gonna be for an optional skid plate that bolts to the bottom of this. So some of this hardware, we're not gonna be using. And right now, we're gonna work on this. So we're gonna use our M4 hardware. These are gonna be these little tiny Allen head skinny bolts they give us. And for right now, we're gonna need two for this spot. So each one is going to get a little tiny flat washer and a lock washer. And we want that lock washer against the head. And what we're gonna do is just post this up there. We're gonna drop that in the hole and then we'll use the Allen key they give us to screw that in. So they're gonna give you two Allen keys. They're gonna give you one for the larger bolts that they give you, those M6 bolts, and this one for the M4. So I'm just gonna get that started, hold all that together, and then I'll pop it through that little hole and start threading it in. Same thing for the other one. We're gonna do that skinny little M4 lock washer, then a flat washer. Get it on the end of our Allen, and we'll get it started. All 
All right, so for right now, we're gonna leave these two bolts loose because we might need to adjust this to get our fog light. Next thing we're gonna do, we're actually gonna get our fog light installed because we have some really tiny hardware that we need to get in here. And it's gonna be really tough when it's actually mounted to the bumper. Now we're working on the passenger side, so we want this little pointed end to face outward and we wanna make sure that we install our fog light upright. So what we're gonna do is just face this fin section upwards and we're gonna lay that over and then we can get our hardware installed. Now we're gonna be using that same M4 hardware, except this time we're gonna do a flat washer on the head and we're gonna go up through the back. You can face them down if you want to, but it's gonna make it a lot harder to get that flat washer, lock washer, and nut on there without all of your hardware just continuously falling off on you. So we'll do a flat washer, lock washer, and then a little tiny nut. The same thing goes for the next three of them. We'll get all four of these in, then we'll tighten everything up. Now you wanna be really careful when you're tightening these up. I would recommend using just a ratchet, a relatively small one, because this housing is plastic and you don't wanna crack these ends. So we're gonna tighten them up just enough to crush those little lock washers. And then we'll get this thing installed in the bumper. Now that we have this whole assembly together, next thing we're gonna do is install it on our bumper. Instructions are pretty primitive as far as what hardware to use and what washers go where. So we don't have enough washers to put any on the head of the M6 bolt, so we're just gonna push the M6 bolts through the outside. And then on the back side, we're gonna do a flat washer since this bracket has a pretty large opening. And then we'll do a lock washer and then a nut. Now you are gonna have one threaded hole, it's gonna be down here, so you won't need a lock washer and a washer for that one. You could use one on the outside if you wanted to. So that one threaded one, you can use that provided Allen key to tighten that up. So just go ahead and run that all the way in. And then you'll need that Allen key they give you and a 10 millimeter socket or a wrench on an impact will tighten the rest of these up.
once you get that fog light and fog light housing completely installed, of course you want to do that same exact thing to get the other side installed. We're going to move on to our next step, which is going to be installing these ball plates. Now we get these ball plates and these are going to install on the back side of our bumper just like this. That way we can attach it to our frame. Now you're going to get these little plastic retaining washers and what these are going to do is they're going to push onto those bolt plates. That's going to keep them from falling out when we get our bumper on. It looks like we only got four with our kit, but if you happen to get eight, you can do two per bolt plate. We're just going to do one on each bolt plate. That way we can get this thing installed. All you want to do is just push that down. You can spin it around and then that's going to hold that in. We're going to do both of these on this side and then you can do that same exact thing for the other side. All right, so the last thing that we have to do before we get our bumper installed is going to be to install this 20 inch light bar. Now we do get some packets of hardware, however we get these funky little brackets that are for these sliding mounts down here. So what I'm actually going to do is use some of that leftover bumper hardware, those M6 bolts, to attach these to this bracket. So I'm going to use the shorter bolts, each one's going to get a lock washer and a flat washer, and I'm just going to install them through the end of the bracket into our lights. Once we get those in, we'll grab that Allen head that they give us and we'll tighten these up. You just want to tighten up those bolts until you crush those little lock washers and make sure that this light is not going to swivel and flop around. So looks pretty good. So we'll get this off the table and we'll go ahead and install it on the Jeep. All right, so now we have this bumper fully assembled. You want to stage your hardware and also I have Ryan here from Extreme Terrain to help me get this bumper on. So all we want to do is just lift it up. We want to make sure that we're not going to push those bolt plates back out and we want to make sure that it goes in the frame ramps. Once you get the bumper on, we're going to install the hardware to secure it to the frame rails. What we're going to do, first we're going to get a flat washer, a lock washer, and then that M12 nut. Now one thing that may happen is these bolt plates might push a little bit in when you go to get this bumper on. You want to be very careful. A plastic washer is only going to do so much. So you may need to lift this bumper up a little bit. Just reach your hand behind there and push that bolt plate through, and that'll get that started. That way you can get your hardware installed. So you're going to have two studs on the outside. We'll get all that hardware installed. And we'll do the inside ones, and then we can go ahead and get the other side installed. Once you get those on, we're going to tighten them up. So we're going to use an 18 millimeter socket on a ratchet. And then we'll work on getting those inside ones. I'll go to the inside. Get those installed. You can actually get these from up top, making it a little bit easier. Same thing, flat washer, lock washer, and then a nut. Making sure that you don't push that bolt plate in and lose it. And we can tighten those up as well. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to plug in and attach our fog light harness. We're going to come over to our far side on the driver's side. This is just going to be that single plug. And make sure that that clicks in. Now the next thing you want to do, you can run it over top or under the frame rail. There's actually a bunch of holes in the bottom of the bumper, so that would be a good spot to zip tie this. Make sure it doesn't go hanging down and dragging on the ground. But any way you want to route this in a safe spot, we're going to go under the frame rail. You can go through the winch plate if you wanted to. We're just going to go over the other side, plug the other one in, and then plug it into our factory fog light harness. Frame rail, and then yeah, you just want to zip tie your harness, make sure it's not going to dangle. 
All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna work on wiring up our 20 inch LED light bar. So we're under here, underneath the hood at our battery, which is on the passenger side, and we have two leads that we need to hook up. You're gonna have this black wire, that's gonna be your negative, and we're gonna hook it, obviously, to these back black wires over here. That's gonna be our negative side, and then this red wire, same thing is gonna match up with our positive side. Now we don't wanna loosen up these nuts right here. This is actually what holds this terminal to the post on our battery. We wanna work on getting these nuts over here. So I'm gonna take off this nut over here, we'll hook up the negative, and then we'll work on getting the positive hooked up. So I'm gonna take this nut off over here. I'm using a 10 millimeter socket or an extension with a quarter inch drive ratchet. All we're gonna do is just crack that nut loose, get that off of there, we can hook up our negative side. that back on, we'll tighten that terminal up. All right, so next we're gonna do the positive. This one's gonna be a little bit different of a size. We're gonna use this empty spot over here, and I'm gonna use a 12 millimeter socket for that. Same thing. That's gonna be a 12 millimeter socket, same thing, we're gonna crack that free. Unthread it, we'll just throw our end on real quick, tighten that back up. Whatever you do while you're working on the positive side, don't ground yourself, don't smack the tool against anything metal. So after you get that wired up, the next thing you have to do, one of the things you have to do is mount this relay. Now you can zip tie this in place. There's a couple spots over here. You can utilize a factory mounting point. Just take a bolt out. There's a couple of studs over here that you can get that on. You just want to situate that out of the way. Make sure it's not dangling and flopping around. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to take our switch. We're going to go across the engine bay. We want to zip tie all of that up and out of the place from hot and moving parts. That way we can go through the engine bay into the cabin. Now as far as places to go through the firewall, right here next to your brake booster, there's actually going to be a plug in the firewall and you can pull that plug out. It's pretty much in the middle of this, but on the side. And once you pull that plug out, you can pass your switch through and that's gonna lead into the cabin. And then all you'll have to do on the inside, you just have to go inside, reach up through by the pedals and then pull that all the way out and then you can just stick it on your dash wherever you want. So we're gonna pass this all the way through inside and then we'll go and plug our lights in. All right, so next we need to drop our harness down so we can plug it into the light bar. Now right here in front of your air box, next to your radiator, and of course behind your headlight, you have a pretty good spot to drop this down. And we wanna feed it down through the bottom, that way we can plug our light in. Once again, you just wanna keep an eye on where you're going with this. You wanna keep it away from hot and moving parts because we don't wanna melt through our harness. So we'll fish that at the bottom. All you're gonna do is just plug that in. Now once again, you wanna zip tie all of this wiring out of the way. You don't want it to get caught on anything while you're driving down the road. So the last part that we need to install that comes with this kit is gonna be the D-rings. Now, a lot of people choose not to run these while they're driving around. They can make a lot of noise, swing around, smash into your bumper, and that's gonna chip your paint. Now, if you do plan to run these, it's perfectly fine, and we sell isolators that are gonna keep that from you know, causing damage. One thing you wanna make sure that you do when you get these in is make sure that this pin is tight, that way it doesn't back off. These are really easy to install. All you have to do is just unscrew that center pin. You place it over the hole, and then all we're gonna do is screw it back in. Now what you can do, you can take a tool like a Phillips head screwdriver, stick it in that hole, make sure that that's nice and tight. You can also grab it with a pair of pliers or channel locks and just tighten that down. What some other people do, is you can take a zip tie or a wire and just go through that hole and around this, and that's gonna keep that pin from backing out and this thing falling off while you're going down the road. So we'll get this one on, we'll go get the other one on, and that's gonna pretty much wrap it up for the install. All right guys, so now that we have this bumper fully installed, what you wanna do is you wanna torque all eight of those nuts, holding this to the frame down to 40 foot-pounds, and then at that point in time, you're ready to toss your winch on if you choose to go that route. I wanna remind you again to make sure that you zip tie all of that wiring. You wanna keep all of that up and out of the way and just in a secure spot. However, that is going to wrap up my review and install. For more videos and products like this, check us out at extremeterrain.com.